Okay, thank you very much. It's a um, great pleasure to be invited to take part in, the, um, in this session. Um, we are a, um, a morphology department. We have very many um, hearts that we um, work with our colleagues, um, congenital and acquired heart disease, and we use them for research and education. So I want to start off by looking at um, the beginning, the left atrial appendage. How, is it, how does it develop? We have a common pulmonary vein. It's incorporated into the main body. And you can see by um, this little diagram here, right down at the bottom, we have um, the, the pulmonary vein is surrounded by French-shaped myocardial cells incorporated into the main body. And then we can see that there's a difference between the main body and the appendage. So there's a discontinuity of the myocardium uh, between the appendage itself and the, um, and the main body. The appendage is the smallest part of the atrium. It's narrow and finger-like. That's the, the general term that we describe. And the actual tip can be in any um, different direction. In between the pectinate muscles, um, the wall is very, very thin. It's fibrous tissue. Um, it can be transilluminated in the pathology setting. Um, and the appendage itself is close to very important neighboring structures, and it's distendable. Um, I've noted here that we have uh, ANP, and it's 40 times higher in the appendage itself than in the rest of the atrial uh, body. And this is used for, it's a diuretic, it's for removal of sodium. Um, and it's the, the most intracardiac thrombi originate in the left atrial appendage. Will that move? Yeah. So we um, looked at some of our cases of specimens um, a few years ago, and we looked at what was the morphology, the common morphology that we found. And these are the four types which are, have been replicated and are um, in very many clinical uh, papers. And we have that windsock, cactus, chicken wing, and cauliflower um, morphologies. There are other um, descriptions um, spiral. Uh, there are very many, but these are the four that have been replicated in very many um, uh, uh, papers. And um, with this, we can see that the bend this is the important part at the os itself. Uh, it, we found between 12, uh, 7 and 12 millimeters from the in 30% of our cases. And that's the challenge for device seating when you've got a very early bend. Will this move? Yes, so, the, um, so you want to have a good landing zone between one and two uh, 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 millimeters there, right at the landing zone here. So uh, a challenging case will have a short landing zone. Um, you can have a proximal bend, which we can see here. But then when we see um, other different types of morphologies, the cauliflower have a very large os, it's very broad, but you've got little working depth. So within the morphologies itself, you've got um, very many lobes, and the most common type of lobe will have, we have two lobes to the appendage itself. Um, it's that very broad appendage, os, and very little um, landing zone. So if we look at a clinical paper, which looked at over 900 cases, um, the most common morphology, even though we, we put up the four different types, the most common morphology is that chicken wing morphology. And the rest of them make up about 50% of the cases. And um, it's the non-chicken wing types that are most associated with the emboli formation of emboli. And you can see how we've got just um, a sort of a blind ending, stump-like appendage. We don't have that curvature that we see in the chicken wing. So there's slowing down of the blood flow there. Oh, got the sound on there. Never mind. Um, we have two um, lobes to this appendage. I've got my finger, you can see I'm pushing my finger into the os here. So when we turn around and we see what, is, what does the os look like, and they're very never round, really. Even in this one, it's rather triangular-shaped. They're mainly oval-shaped. 
and we can see as well little pits and divots in the realms, in the, uh, in the vicinity of the os. And we can see just in the bottom um, two um, panels here, we can see we have a very, very broad appendage opening with the pectinate muscles in between. You see that there? And then the, the lower panel, a very narrow little appendage os. So when we looked at this ourselves, we had um, most of our cases, the os was oval and it had a mean diameter of approximately 17 millimetres. This is in 31 adult cases. Um, and we had very many pits and troughs and very thin areas near to the os itself. But then how do we describe where the os is? Um, in this imaging paper, you can see that they have de uh, demarcated the division where the left pulmonary vein and the appendage is, and then going down, which is the, the little yellow arrow here, and then at the bottom, the blue arrow, is where the, um, the mitral annulus is. But even within that um, os itself, they have divided it into a proximal portion and a distal portion, and that's depending on where, um, how much trabeculated myocardium there is. And so you can see you can have a very extensive uh, proximal portion, which is your landing zone. So there are thin areas within the appendage itself, particularly around the area of the os. And we can see it in our little histology slide here up at the left panel. You can see the little lighter areas. And these are uh, fibro fatty tissue, so we have that, those indentations of the, uh, the pectinate muscles, and then in between, very, very thin, with some atrial myocardium, and then with um, uh, fibro fatty tissue. And in the other two panels, we've transilluminated just the appendage, uh, and you can see it, the appendage itself is very, very thin, but we have very specific areas where they, um, in between those pectinate muscles, um, which just have that fibro fatty tissue. Let me move on. Uh -huh. So, what else is key in the deployment of devices? It's the os itself, and it's not always a smooth wall chamber. We do describe the left atrial as a smooth wall chamber, it's, but the body isn't, and the appendage isn't. And we have very many pits or divots or cul de sacs. Um, particularly at the os itself, um, very commonly we'll have the pectinate muscles spilling out of the appendage into the main body of the, um, uh, of the atrium itself. And these pits can be quite deep as well. And these, again, might be um, an optimal site for thrombus formation. So we have another look at uh, a heart. This is the appendage here quite a large, broad appendage. And then when we see absolutely enormous um, os, we can see the lateral ridge, just we've cut through there. I've just got my finger there. So at the top part here, so the pulmonary vein just at the, at the very uh, superior rim. And we can see how thin that lateral ridge is as well. And here, up in the corner, we can see how extensive the pectinate muscles is, and they are actually spilling out into the main body, and just at the corner there, we can just about see the, uh, the mitral valve, the orifice of the mitral valve. So what about the myocardium itself? It's not uniform all the way through from the inside of the atrium to the outside. If we look at the... Um, uh, at the inside dissection of the myocardial arrangement, you can see there are abrupt changes of direction. So you can see the os here, and we can see there's abrupt changes around the, um, uh, the os. Um, and from the outside, you can see the little chicken wing appendage here in the middle. And then if we see, here we've got the... Um, the heart looking from the front, that's in the, um, the far uh, right panel, and we can see BB for Batman's bundle, and we can see how that expands 
and um, connects the right atrium over to the left atrium and the, the, the grooves, the bundle crosses over and then wraps around either side of the left atrial appendage itself, bifurcates around. So what are the other structures that are important in the, um, in the os region of the appendage itself? And this is, I've mentioned the left lateral ridge. We can see the histology um, section. We can see the position of the, the circumflex archery. And also we can see in this image here in the middle, just here, we can see we've got that left lateral ridge. And when we look face on, it looks quite thick. But here in the panel on the left, we've just dissected through. And you can see it's only a couple of millimeters thick. So it's a very narrow structure, this little infolded region. And the other features that we have to be aware of that are close to the left atrial appendage, we can see the great car jet vein, see GCV, coming over, and we can see the vein of Marshall itself. So the oblique vein of Marshall, it lies between the, um, the appendage itself and the, uh, the pulmonary veins and then it will join into the uh, coronary sinus. And within that left lateral ridge, that's where the vein of Marshall will run. And we can see that in the, these histology sections. In between here, we've got the VOM. Here's the pulmonary veins and the left atrial appendage. So it's just a little um, uh, structure surrounded by fibrous tissue itself. And then here, we've got the fibrous pericardium covering the appendage itself. And we can see the position of the great carjack vein here on the left. So the other important point to mention here, what else is in the realms of the, of the os, is atrial innervation. So there are ganglionated plexi in and around that uh, ligament of Marshall here. It's been termed here, so ligamental vein of Marshall. Um, and so we can see that in a superior portion and at the inferior region. And they connect there in between. You can see where the, where the ligament of Marshall is, um, is located. And that's part of the intrinsic cardiac autonomic nervous system. And it has been implicated in the progression of AF. And if we think back to the very first slide where we had the embryology, there's the discontinuity of the myocardium from the atrial appendage to the body of the, um, the rest of the atrium itself. And this might be uh, a factor in the creation of those uh, in AF there. Will this move on? Uh -huh. So another feature, where is the left phrenic nerve? Again, we can see there is a variation in morphology in the position of the left phrenic nerve. You can see the far left panel, the most common position, approximately 20% here, it's at the um, anterior portion, just here. See the fibrous pericardium? We can see the left atrial appendage. And the most common position is right at the midpoint through the left atrial appendage itself. So it's, it lies along, uh, right along the, the midline of that left atrial appendage. But there is, in about 20, 23%, the left phrenic nerve, in that right panel, it will lie just at the, the area where the os is. And you can see the little um, dotted line there in blue. That's the position of the os of the appendage. And this is where the left phrenic nerve is running. So these are all normal hearts that have been um, dissected. And again, we can see the, um, the histology there. We can see the position of the, um, of the left phrenic nerve. Will it move? Uh -huh. So, last to one slide. Um, what else can we say? All of these um, hearts that we were looking at, they are, have normal um, atrial appendage myocardium. But there is a change in morphology when you get an appendage with AF. They are much thicker um, at, the, uh, at the orifice particularly, and the morphology of the pectinate muscles change. We mentioned, and I've mentioned before, the very thin T 
tissue in between the pectinate muscles. And you can see here at the bottom panel, the two um, casts here, the cast on the left is normal, and the cast on the right is very much thicker, and you have much thicker pectinate muscles. So even in between, much thicker os, um, and uh, you lose this, you begin to have a very smooth um, uh, body itself of the appendage. And that might uh, be associated with the formation of uh, some sort of um, stasis of blood within the appendage. Will it work? And so my final slide. So, as we know, it has a huge variation in morphology. There's multiple pits and crevices, particularly at the os itself. We can see the proximity of the appendage to all the other important cardiac structures. And um, I have a, um, an image on the, the right-hand panel. Um, now we can do, with CT and MRI scanning, we can make our own 3D prints of the heart. And this is a, an image, a heart that we have. And I'm just showing you the, the os of the appendage. So potentially we can use this uh, 3D printing. You don't need to print the heart itself. Uh, print the model, you can just use the, the PDF, but that could be used as well to identify the, uh, the morphology of the appendage prior to um, seating your, um, your device. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.